You're, uh, you said you were in Australia. What time of day is it there? Uh, it's quarter to... S I'm in Melbourne, so it's quarter to seven in the morning, but I worked overnight, so I'm fresh yeah. as a daisy. Uh, <laughs> yes, again, I'll just remind people that um, Potholer uh, has agreed to uh, come on the show, but um, the time for him, if we did it at our usual time, would be uh, five for him 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And for some reason, he's not very excited about doing it at that time. Uh, so there are a couple of options. One is that we change the time of the show to fit him in, or we do a pre-recorded slot, which we play during the course of the show. So what do people think? Change? Let's take a vote on it. Thumbs up to change the time to fit Potholer. Thumbs down to do a pre-recorded uh, to fit him in uh, so we can do it that way a special show yeah I, I thought people would think that and and to be honest most of the views that we get do come well the the program's been posted on YouTube so well everyone oh there's only one um, you just being a troublemaker yeah so what, what time would it be for us uh, Americans because we're really important I have to say <laughs> that I've, I've got this huge mental block when it comes to time zones and I, I got his message um, only yesterday saying, you know, there's a bad time and can we do it another time or whatever. Uh, and I I did think about trying to work out times and it started giving me a headache. Because it, you, it's actually Monday morning for you, isn't it? It's not like... Early yeah, Sunday, yeah, it's, it's actually... And, and it's... To make it even worse, it's our Queen's birthday holiday today. So, you know, the Queen of England. You guys have the Queen? They've yeah. bought, they've borrowed one. Still, we're still apart. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move on, if that's all right. I'm hopefully going to bring... We'll, we'll send you our instruction book on revolutions. Uh, but no thank worries, you thanks. for the call. Uh, enjoy Talk the Queen's soon. birthday. <laughs> uh, JR, I hope you're ready to join us. We can indeed, sir. All right, I forgot. Sorry, I, changed, I had my other microphone on. Hi, uh, JR. Uh, Oh, shoot, just a sec. You're worse than um, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> At least Andy got it right this time. Sorry, I was, Andy, I was distracted. Andy did well this time. You've got to give him credit for that. All right, and let's see, if I, let's see if I can get my camera on, too. Oh, dang, I got the Manny cam on. I'm just all over the place today. Okay, uh, tell us what you've got for us, JR, whilst you're trying to sort out the camera. All right, well, I... Uh, I had some uh, Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door, lucky me. Uh, two two uh, adult women and one child that looked to be around 11. And, oh, dear, why do I look so funny? <laughs> oh, did you freeze? I can't. I, I, we can still hear you. Here. Oh, there you go. So I have to lock up for a second. All right. And they, uh, what, yeah, they, they, uh, gave me this uh, pamphlet that said, it says uh, five questions worth asking. The first one is, how did life begin? And one of my favorite lines from that was, uh, I, I think I sent it to you in the contact request, uh, life always comes from pre-existing life. However, if we go back far enough in time, is it really possible that this fundamental law was broken? You look like an 80s music video. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Uh, uh, here we go. Ah, there we go. How's that? Much better. All right. Did you did you hear any of the things I said? Or we just... Oh yeah, no, we, we, we were we heard everything. Distracting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wonder. I wonder um, with these people that go around knocking on doors trying to convert people. I wonder what their success rate is, and whether they do it on the basis of success, um, or whether they do it out of some sort of obligation and thinking, oh, well, I've, I've done God's work today. I can sleep happily at night. I, mean, I cannot, simply cannot believe that they're going to convert many people by that method. Did anyone you, got any ideas? Anyone in the chat? Really How many people do they convert? You overestimate the scientific literacy of, and I think both our countries, but 60% of people think that lasers are focused sound waves. Now, DPR, can you idea? spot the problem there? Yes, I can. Even even I can even understand the problem. Even you can yeah. figure out. Because we all know that, that it's dumb. radars that are sound waves. Exactly. 
That's a joke, by the way, before people do think I'm a complete fuckwit. <laughs> but I, I think I, these things are actually very persuasive because most people consider uh, science to be very perplexing. And you're offering someone a way of feeling very smart and superior to the scientists. And I think that appeals to uh, our, our wish to be knowledgeable, or at least not to be dumb. And so when you tell someone, don't worry about figuring out all this science stuff, you don't need to know it because God knows it. And, and so, you know, you don't have to worry about your lack of scientific literacy. You know God. You know the Bible. You can toss all that tough science stuff out in the in the on the curb, right? That's uh, that's I think what really resonates with people is. But hang is on, it, you say it resonates with people. J Jr., just just remind us again what they said about the origins of life. Uh, uh, life always comes from pre-existing life. The, uh, if you go back far enough, was this fundamental law broken? Yeah. See, no. That, no, that resonates, that. does it, concordance? Yeah, because it, it's common sense. Common sense. And, and a lot of times they'll substitute common sense. Uh, you know, anytime you hear someone arguing, you know, plain sense, talk about this, fancy scientist. You know, it's anti-intellectual, anti-science, uh, anti-empirical. But it's very plain, common sense, you know, substituting your experience with uh, uh, pot roasts and grass with uh, uh, understanding subatomic particles. And people can understand pot roasts, but they can't understand uh, things that happened over a billion years, right? No one can. No one can directly understand those things. So it's a way of making these concepts easier for people to at least reject, you know, and substitute in something much simpler for them to understand. Uh, you, you give someone a complicated explanation and a simple explanation, and they will prefer the simple explanation every time. Andy, Andy is perfect uh, uh, test case for this, right? He thinks that he's really solved this. You know, we're coming up with, right, with all right, these complicated right. answers with more problems, whereas he's got one easy solution. God done it. God done it. That's an easy solution. I can, I can understand but that. One. That's have, easy to understand. You've got to be really thick to think that that answer is in fact an answer, don't you? Yes, I think you've hit on it right there. You've got a lot of very thick people, or people who don't want to feel... Well, someone posted in the chat, intellectual laziness, and I think that, yeah. that, that may yeah. sum it up. But I think it's more than that, because intellectual laziness, they wouldn't even ask the question. Um, so it's more than that, because they've got to invent an answer that they're comfortable with. Okay, it's lazy because they have not really looked into it, but... Um, <coughs> I think there's more than just intellectual laziness. There's, a, there's some I, need I, for I, an answer. You, you can't isolate religion from all the other supernatural beliefs. People honestly believe in fate. Uh, they believe that every time they pull the lever on that uh, uh, one-armed bandit, right, the, the slot machine, that somehow their luck goes into it or, or there's some some mystical force that's guiding what's going to happen next. And that really appeals to people because if it's pure randomness, if, if, you know, there's not some meaning to it all, then they feel very empty inside. They feel like, you know, the world is a strange and scary place. And this is our way of understanding it, even if it's not true, right? It, it, it gives people hope, as Andy would say, even if it's a false hope. Look at all the think, supernatural JR, beliefs. Was Wait, subtly, why did, I think JR was subtly trying to say that he's got another topic he wants to talk yeah. about by holding up let, let, close to the quick, screen. JR, real Sorry, quick, go let's, let's go back to other supernatural beliefs. So people used to believe um, that the fairies made the, the mushrooms grow in a circle, right? That was because that's where they were dancing, right? And where the, the fairies danced in a circle and therefore there was... Well, we understand that better now and we can discard that, but there are still people that believe that that's why mushrooms grow in a circle. There are still people believe that believe that aliens are the only possible explanation for the pyramids, right? Because it's so much easier to say, well, pff, aliens did it. But it's not easier because... Well, for them, maybe. For me, they it wouldn't be. Because be, where do the aliens, aliens come from? What, how did they do it? Where did they go to? Why didn't they leave any evidence of the fact that they've been here at all? What sort of form did they have? How did they travel? What sort of spaceship did they have? All of that sort of thing. So this is what I mean. I can't understand how people can accept this drivel as an answer. It poses far more many, far more questions than it answers. Anyway. You're correct, of course. Of course I am. I'm always correct. <laughs> Toss it back to JR. Um, sorry. 
JR, oh. sorry, uh, you, you, I think you were hinting that you had something <laughs> to say about the simplicity of life. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's another thing they, they talk about here. The, is any form of life really simple? That's point two of their five points. Uh, then they go and they go on to describe how complicated things like brains, eyes, bones are. Uh, and and, and it's, it's actually uh, some of the things I say, say is actually similar to what I said in, a, in what was said in a video I responded to, where they think they, they seem to think that all these complicated systems had to appear at once and and were are completely independent on each other and don't work partially formed. Like they think, well, how would ha like I, one of the a quote I heard once uh, was, how do, could half a heart function? And what what they don't know is that what they don't know to ask is uh, well they ask an amphibian I mean they have half a, they, they potentially have half a heart uh, compared to what a mammal has and they and they function just fine half a heart doesn't work very well for us but it works fine for them so uh, right, Warren, what's, what's point three four and five all right uh, uh, where did the instructions come from has all life descended from a common ancestor and Five, of course, is it reasonable to believe the Bible? <laughs> well, what, tell us what they say about five. All right, I haven't read much in the five. I was I was dreading it too much. Uh, I mean, it, it, whilst you're looking at that, uh, Jack, um, at least Andy had the uh, decency to say that the Bible uh, was full of contradictions um, and was the era errant word of man rather than the er inerrant word of God, which he got something right. And it's good that he's got eyes, because he's got to find a female dog, <laughs> or he's a dead dog. Ah, oh, damn, it's painful. JR, do go on. What have they got to say about uh, point yeah. five? Have, have you ever been misled about a person? Maybe you heard others talk about him or quote him. You expected to dislike him, only to find, on getting to know him, that he had been misrepresented. Re represented. Many have had such an experience uh, regarding the Bible. More than a few educated people take a dim view of the Bible. Can you understand why? That book is often represented or quoted in such a way that it sounds unreasonable, unscientific, or just plain wrong. Is it po possible that the Bible has been misrepresented? misrepresented? Want me to go on? Or is that enough for now? That's enough for now. I can't remember what what is, what's their main sort of um, theistic or theological oh. theological belief. They they reject. I mean, I don't know about the other stuff, but they reject um, uh, organ transplants and uh, transfusions. So in a lot of cases, uh, their young children die of uh, easily prevented uh, conditions because they refuse a lot of surgeries. Um, and and I don't mean to to pick on them, but it, it's an issue that that I think is very important that. You know, children have a right to medical care regardless of their parents' religious beliefs. So I think children have a, a health care as a legal duty. Um, I think there have been some successful prosecutions in America. Of, there have. Of... It's been mixed where the child can um, initiate. Of course, by the time the child is a teenager, they've grown up in the Jehovah's Witness Church, and they often Big make Lundy, decisions based on their parents' now, religious please. belief. Um, so that's, that's my particular problem with them. Yes, and rightly so. So, uh, sorry, I, I, I missed some of it because um, of the background noise. So, the prosecutions, so, what was it? Some have been successful? Some have been successful. When the child is old enough to express their own preference, then that tends to override um, the, the, the state. I mean, the judges usually go the direction that the child expresses an interest in, um, feeling that, you know, it's the autonomy of the child, even if they're not quite of age. Um, so there have been quite a few cases like that. But it, it, my, my position on it is, you know, it's almost impossible for the child to make a truly unbiased decision if they've grown up for 15 years in the church. Then obviously then they're going to tend towards those beliefs, which you can't do anything about it. It's a very complex situation.